This is the fifth video in a 30-part series giving an ecological overview of the insect orders. This video will be looking at the order Blattodea, commonly known as cockroaches. This video is not for how to get rid of cockroaches, simply their lifestyle and ecology. That being said, here's what the five most common cockroach species in the home look like. Let's begin. The order Blattodea belongs in the Neoptera, or New Wing, and is the third of five major subdivisions of insects. They are defined as the first insects to be able to fold their wings over their abdomen, and they all come in many shapes and sizes. Technically, termites belong in the order Blattodea, as they are direct genetic descendants of cockroaches, but their lives are so complex that I decided to cover them in a separate future video. The name Blattodea comes from two different languages. Blatt, derived from the Latin word blattus, which means cockroach or pest. Blattus is closely connected to the Greek word blatta, which has historically been used to refer to various types of cockroaches. Odea is a Greek suffix meaning like or resembling, so their name is basically resembling a cockroach. In English, cockroach is derived from the Spanish word cucaracha. The etymology of cucaracha is believed to derive from the late Latin word cucaracias, which itself might have been a modification of cucurbida, meaning gourd or squash. This connection likely arose because of the cockroach's shape, which might have reminded people of the round shape of a gourd. These insects are found everywhere on Earth, except Antarctica, and are important for breaking down decaying matter within their ecosystems. This is because the cockroach is a detritivore, omnivore, cannibal, and will eat pretty much everything. It will eat whatever can sustain it, which is quite a lot. The only things they won't eat are toxins or substances with a heavy smell like garlic. And even then, if it's organic matter, they will eat it if they have no other option. They have the broadest diets in the insect kingdom, which is partly the reason they are so comfortable in our homes. Shown on the screen here is a list of just some of the things cockroaches can eat. This lineage of insects is extremely old, and it's what we call a generalist's generalist. Because they eat just about anything and exist just about anywhere, they have to be good at being prepared for any situation. Thus, the evolutionary pressures placed upon them have shaped them into a jack-of-all-trades survivalist. Here are some of the key refinements that the evolutionary pressures have gifted them. 1. Cockroaches can withstand radiation levels much higher than humans. They can survive decapitation for weeks and endure long periods without food or water. 2. They have a flattened body which allows them to squeeze into tight spaces, making them difficult to eliminate in homes and natural environments, as they can enter tight spaces by making their body more compact, sort of like a cat. Number 3. They have fast reflexes and high speed. Their giant interneurons enable rapid escape responses. What this means is that their large nerves can help them react extremely quickly to vibrations and other stimuli, even more so than other insects. Number four, rapid reproduction. Species like the German cockroach, Platella germanica, breed rapidly, ensuring high population survival. This often coincides with food availability, allowing them to capitalize on a good situation. Number five, microbial symbiosis. Cockroaches harbor endosymbiotic bacteria that help them digest otherwise indigestible substances such as cellulose. Many species are social or exhibit parental behavior to share these microbes, which is believed to be the reason that termites were able to evolve from cockroaches. But remember, cockroaches are not eusocial and do not form colonies. 
only small communities and only for mutual reasons. Remember, these insects can be cannibals in the right circumstance. The cockroach does not lay eggs, so to speak. It lays an uathika, which is more like a purse-like structure that contains the eggs. This disjointed type reproduction can help better protect and camouflage the eggs, as the uathika is stronger than a typical egg case. These insects are reviled by humans because, despite everything we throw at them, they still manage to be the most difficult insects to remove from homes. But beyond this hatred, perhaps I can offer another perspective. This insect has a low number of species for how many of them there are. This is because they are extremely refined to their generalist niche. They are designed to be able to capitalize on the most common sense strategy and do so as efficiently as it takes. I like to say they're kind of like the Michael Ehrman trout of the insect world, doing the hard work that needs to be done and doing it quickly and efficiently with no nonsense. Here's another interesting factor. In ecology, the competitive exclusion principle suggests that two species competing for the same exact resources cannot stably coexist. Since cockroaches have remained dominant as generalist scavengers for millions of years, other insects may have had to specialize to avoid direct competition. There is certainly enough room for two groups to fill the same niche, but insects and the passage of time are particularly brutal in this regard. Beetles and butterflies and wasps, the gross variety of insects we see in groups such as these today, is a result of niche specialization. Insects such as these often inhabit or consume or spend their lives on just one plant or animal. The point is that there are a million myriad ways for insects to specialize and adapt their lives to consume just a single food source and do so in a very specific way. But most cockroaches have adapted to none of these. Their lack of specialization to anything but being generalists means that they take much less risk in ecological terms. Say a species of beetle only subsists off of one plant. If the plant dies, so does the beetle. The beetle might have more individuals in the places where its plant grows, and even more than in the cockroach, but the cockroach can exist where that plant doesn't. In probabilistic terms, the cockroach is a huge umbrella as to its environments where it can survive. It has likely the biggest umbrella, or adaptive range, so to speak, in the insect kingdom, even more than any specific beetle. They're a no-nonsense kind of bug, and this no-nonsense actually is likely a factor that drives diversity, especially as the passage of time refines and kills off unsuccessful insects. My point is a little speculative, but it is that cockroaches over millions of years being geared towards the generalist niche are a factor that actively drives other insects to become more varied and stay away from generalizing. The cockroach is an insect that has filled its niche and it's not going anywhere anytime soon. It's okay for you to find them disgusting, because it is disgusting how well they survive. But, perhaps cockroaches are owed a modicum of respect, because in an ecological context, no insect plays it safer. Thank you for watching this episode, and stay tuned for more bug content.